Hey guys, I'm Papa Pete, and I'm here today with a quick review of a book I just recently bought. And that book is Every Game Has a Story by Stacy Burns. Now you might know Stacy as being the creator of Console Purist. Anyway, he's got a book out about his whole life and about his collection of games that is growing more and more every day. Anyway guys, stick around, we'll take a look at Every Game Has a Story by Stacy Burns. Papa P, Papa P, the old ass gamer. P, Papa P, the old ass gamer. If you haven't grown up by the age of 50, you don't have to. After today's video, don't forget to check out IntellivisionCollector.com for all of your Intellivision needs. Luke's just added several homebrew titles to his inventory from some of the top homebrew developers in the Intellivision scene. That's IntellivisionCollector.com. First of all, a little backstory about Stacy. You may know Stacy, like I said before, he is the creator of Console Purist on Facebook, one of the largest uh, Facebook groups for retro gaming or really any console gaming, not just retro, believe me, they cover everything right up to modern day. And it's a group with over 17,000 pushing 18,000 people. And the whole uh, force behind it is Stacy, who created the group in 2016, and it's for his love of video games. He has one of the largest, most prolific collections in the entire United States right now with over 300 consoles, and he's just gone past 10,000 different games, including over 30 complete collections for different systems. Now, we just recently released this book, Every Game Has a Story, and I ordered it right away off of Amazon because I was really interested in what Stacy had to say about video games. I'm going to tell you this right now, it's different than a lot of the books I've read because other books that I've bought and read on video games have been more like encyclopedias uh, with about entire collections of different systems games or uh, even just artwork from a game or something like that. But this one is a little different. This is actually more than just a book about video games. It's a book about how video games have affected Stacy throughout all the different stages of his life. So it's a book not just about games, but about Stacy, his love for the games, and how it's helped him become the person he is today. So let's take a look at the book itself. All right, so here we have Every Game Has a Story by Stacy Burns. Nice paperback edition. Stacy's picture on the back. I'll show a closer picture of that as well as the book. And uh, the cover artwork's really kind of neat. All the different games for different systems, plus a picture, I assume, of Stacy's of Stacy's uh, collection part of it. And the cover is done. He gives an acknowledgement in it to Chip Gerard and Brian Puddin. And if you don't know Brian, Brian lives up here in Canada too. And Brian is uh, the operator of Brian's Man Cave. So. Little kudos to Brian there for helping Stacy with his book. So every game has a story. You look at this 37 chapters in it, which I do like that because uh, it lets you read uh, the book piece by piece, individual little chapters. Um, you know, take a break. The chapters aren't very long, anywhere from like 10 to five to 10 pages. So it's really not too bad. And it's a good way to break it up and work your way through the book. And as you see, uh, every chapter is titled, and there's, there's no color pictures in the book, but there's lots of other pictures that sort of uh, associate with what's going on in those particular chapters. For example, it talks about the very beginning of his life with his parents, and there's a picture of his parents sitting there when, when they were younger. And then there's a picture of Stacy when he was younger. And the book just more or less chronologically goes through Stacy's life, right from when he was uh, very, very young. He got his very first system, which was an Atari 2600. There's a picture of an Atari 2600 right there, right up through his console of the day. And throughout, there's various photos, like there's uh, Last Day of High School, um, there's Stacy and Christy, and Christy's an incredibly important part of this book because that's Stacy's wife, if you haven't uh, assumed that by now. And she is very, very supportive in not only his collecting, but with his health issues, and also in uh, in console purists operating the the Facebook group and something that Stacy's very, very proud of. And not only is she very important in that aspect of his life, but she works very hard with him in his church work, which are, is very, very important to both of them. 
Now the book starts off right at the very beginning from Stacy's very early days as a young child when he was like six years old, seven years old, and he got his first Pong machine, and then he got an Atari 2600, and he talks about his family, where he lived, his hometown, and all the things sort of uh, in the environment of uh, surrounded and affected by his love of video games. He later on, he gets into when he get an, got an NES, when he's like in middle school, right up through to his high school days when he got his first SNES. And he talks about games that really affected his life, like Super Mario World, a game that even to this day, as sort of a ritual, he finishes every July 4th. As you can see, it talks about all of his school days as he started developing, uh, started acquiring more games. I've talked about it before. Kids can't necessarily pick up a whole lot of video games, but of course, later on, if they really, really like them, they'll start start picking up when they become a little bit more independent. And that was the case with Stacy. It talks in here about his first SNES when he was a teenager, his first computer that he had, which was a Tandy 1000. Um, I think his parents got him that. And uh, just various things right throughout. Stacy has a special skill when it comes to beating games. He's beaten hundreds of games over the years. And like I said before, every July 4th, as a tradition, he beats Super Mario World. He talks about things like his complete Nintendo Power Collection and how it came to be, how he got it, uh, the support that his family gave him throughout his life, and not only the support of his family, which is extremely important to him, but he is a very religious person and the support of the church and God in all of his beliefs and all of his upbringing and how he's developed into the game collector that he is today. And yes, they do work together. It uh, is 332 pages altogether. Now we're right up into the very end of sections about Stacy's actual collection in his Xbox room. The shel uh, shelves of various consoles and Stacy's Xbox room. Really quite interesting. But again, one more time, I'm going to uh, reiterate. It is not necessarily the games that take prominence in this book. It's Stacy's life and how... His love of video games has affected him right from when he was a young, young child right up to being the prolific collector that he is today. So it's a different type of read. It It is not only, like I said before, about games, but it's about the development of Stacy throughout his life. The book is about his feelings, his family, uh, the impact that it's had not only on him and his parents, but in him and his wife and how they work together and they collect these games and they've turned their home into somewhat of a, a museum. The Console Purist Museum has three rooms full of video games. If you check out, there's actually some pictures on an article that he did for uh, Old School Gamer uh, a while back. He posted links to it on the Console Purist site, but I'll put a picture here. You can go and find that. Again, Old School Gamer Magazine. It'll be absolutely wonderful for you to check it out. See the article, a few pictures of Stacy and his collection, and just a lot of back information about the game. And if you're looking for even more detail about his family, his wife, Christy, how he grew, his health issues, which he has health issues today, he talks about these in here and how he's overcome them and, again, become one of the pro most prolific game collectors in history. So to wrap things up, if you're looking for a copy of Stacy's book, Every Game Has a Story, I got mine on Amazon.ca here in Canada. You can also get it on Amazon.com. And uh, if you're looking for something that is a story not just about the games themselves, but about how somebody has developed and how video games has affected a person's life, I highly recommend Every Game Has a Story. Anyway, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with me today. Thank you, Stacy, for making a great book. And we'll see you next time, guys. Take care. Papa P, Papa P, the old ass gamer. P, Papa P, the old ass gamer. Hey, Brett Weiss here, author of the 100 Greatest Console Video Games, 1977 through 1987, and many other books, and the host of Tales from a Retro Gamer. You have been watching Papa Pete, the old guy gamer. In fact, he's so old, he just might be older than me. What the hell?